Welcome in the EU Deal After Brexit show, the show organized by the Catholic University and managed by Dr. Aurélien Raka. Um, and you will find many episodes on our channel. Today, for this first special episode, I have the pleasure of welcoming Dr. Aurélien Raka, expert in international and European law. Hello, how are you? Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here. So, the 1st of the January, the UK left the European Union. So the EU law doesn't apply anymore to the UK. What is the current political situation? Uh, the political situation is pretty hard between the EU and the UK uh, because actually on uh, the 21st of December 2020, they signed after uh, three years of negotiations, mm -hmm. uh, they finally uh, found an agreement, um, which is the famous deal. Um, and uh, it contains almost 1,500 pages of uh, treaty. Mm. And this is an amazing and an unprecedented uh, agreement um, between the EU and a third country. Because for the first time, uh, uh, we have a, a member state, a former member state of the EU, that is out. So there are plenty of specific links between uh, the UK and the EU. So the UK, when the UK was a member, it was partly in, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and now uh, the UK is out, but they're still uh, partly uh, in the EU, still in the EU in some ways, because uh, there are 12,000 regulations, uh, 3,000 directives um, done by the EU uh, over the decades. Uh, so they cannot dismantle everything so shortly. And uh, uh, there are plenty of con connections that are still surviving between the UK and the EU. So the context is tricky because uh, we are dealing for the first time with the withdrawal uh, of a member state. Um, but we are considering now uh, that uh, the specificities, and this is why we need studies from lawyers, and this is the, the, the objective of this TV show, uh, which will be done by, by uh, students and, and professionals. Uh, the objective is to study uh, policy after policy, uh, what are the, the concrete consequences for the citizens, the companies, and the states in the future uh, yeah. between the UK yeah, and the EU. Right, real explanations and uh, to be clear and to help people to understand this post-Brexit situation. Um, Dr. Aurélien Raka, what are the main provisions provided by the EU and UK Trade and Cooperation Agreement signed in December 2020? So, I will try to summarize uh, 1,500 pages in, <laughs> in, in one minute. You have one minute. Uh, so, um, there are six parts in, the, in this uh, uh, agreement. And most of them, they focus on uh, the policies of, um, between the EU and the UK. So on trade, on fishery, on uh, competition, state aid, IP, um, environment, and so on. So, uh, so it covers all the policies of the EU. And uh, there are specific parts on uh, creating uh, new institutions which is pretty much paradoxical because uh, the UK wanted to be out of any institution uh, of the EU to get some sovereignty, but they're creating new institutions. Yeah. So uh, it will be called the uh, Partnership Council between the UK and the EU that is going to be settled in the upcoming months. Um, because for the moment, the agreement is not completely stable because it, we are still waiting for the approval of the uh, EP and, and the, the, the states, and we need unanimity on this mm. agreement of the 27 member states. So we're still waiting for uh, the, approved, the entire approval of this deal, which is not completely stable. Um, and this agreement is also creating new dispute settlements. And uh, uh, it is introducing arbitration yeah. in case of conflict between the UK and the EU. 
uh, that would be pretty much at the state level because uh, this agreement is not legally binding and has no direct effect for the citizens and the companies for the moment. Mm. We'll see in the application of this treaty, maybe there will be some decisions adopted by this partnership council that will be directly uh, applicable and, and that will concern directly the citizens and the companies. But for the moment, we're still waiting and we need to study. Yeah, it's a start, it's not fixed, it's, mm. uh, it's not stable. Not at all, no. no, no. It, we, it requires uh, months and years of studies and actually for um, academics and, and lawyers that are uh, doing some research, this, is, uh, this agreement is, is a great field because it is opening one, uh, this is a, uh, opportunity, yeah, isn't? new doors of, of research and yeah. So we have work. <laughs> yes. Um, sure. Dr. Renaga, what's your perspective on the future relations of the UK with the EU? Are you optimistic and doubt? Uh, this is hard to anticipate. Uh, the four last years, from 2016, the, 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 in, on the 23rd of June, when, we, when the UK had this referendum, mm. until today, there were a lot of surprises. And many times, uh, we, the contrary of what we could uh, foresee happened. And uh, now this is hard to, to, to have pronostics on the future because um, the, the, the close past was plenty of, it was full of, of surprises. However, uh, one point that is sure is that the UK will be one of the closest, if not the closest, uh, uh, partner of the, of the European Union, because we have plenty of exchanges, economic exchanges, goods, services. So even if the current data, if you followed in the, in the last weeks, uh, uh, the, the, um, the, there is a decrease of the exchanges, the export and import of goods mm. between the UK and the EU, which is dramatic, mm. because 30% uh, uh, less of uh, trade in the last months between, uh, after, after Brexit, between the UK and the, and the EU. So uh, there is a risk of disaster, of economic disaster. However, um, I don't think that on the long term uh, that will affect completely. Now there is, a, there is a choice that should be done by the UK, is whether they want to remain close and uh, whether they integrate in the future, for mm -hmm. example, the EEA, the, economic, the European Economic Area, or um, any other agreement that is close to what we have in Swiss with Switzerland or with Norway. And this is not completely done, this choice, um, and the UK still has uh, many challenges, uh, political challenges uh, in, in the upcoming uh, future. So, yeah, we are waiting for this and, and we'll study uh, the legal situation here. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Raka, for bringing us your expertise and for being here. Uh, this show arrived at its hands. Uh, you can find other episodes on our channel. It's the EU deal after Brexit. Thank you for following us. Thank you. Thank you.